Blessings, namaste, and love everyone. I'm spiritualist, psychic astrologer, and medium Ray Seti. Once again, I thank you for offering me this opportunity to share with you my astrological and spiritual insights. And in this segment, we are looking to the month of September 2023. As always, time seems to be unfolding so, so very, very quickly. And as always, I suggest to be mindful, to be in the present, be in the moment, and always be in a place of gratitude for the many blessings that are already surrounding you. Now, we are preparing for our next eclipse season, which will take place in October about three months before the eclipse event we are always offered the opportunity to energetically prepare for what might be cast in motion at the time of the solar eclipse and what is culminating at the time of the lunar eclipse certainly i suggest reflecting on what has occurred in your life since the last eclipse season which occurred in april and may in the spring of 2023 to perhaps resolve anything which may have come to the surface and also continue fortifying whatever you may have cast in motion at the time of the solar eclipse which was on april 20th now we begin september with several planets retrograde but i would like to emphasize both mercury and venus are retrograde as we begin september now, Mercury began its retrograde phase on August 23rd. It will uh, move direct on September 15th. And as I'm always suggesting to be mindful that not until Mercury moves past the point at which it turned retrograde are we completely out of the retrograde energies. And that is on September 30th. Remember, when we understand how to properly work with these planetary energies and cycles we offset and counteract any negative results which may um, affect and sometimes uh, disrupt our lives it's all about working with the energy none of this even a mercury retrograde is not designed to disrupt and create confusion or chaos in our lives we only have those occurrences when we're not properly working with the dynamic of the opportunities which are presented to us. Now this Mercury retrograde specifically is in the show. Uh, Mercury is what's referred to as the planetary ruler of Virgo. Mercury actually rules both Gemini and Virgo, but in this instance, um, I will be addressing the Mercury retrograde in the sign of Virgo. Now because Mercury is the planet of the mind, Virgo also can be very mercurial. And we sometimes can be over analytical. That's when the Virgo element isn't properly anchored and grounded. When that energy is anchored and grounded, it offers us the opportunity to tap into the creative dynamic of the mind. Now, what I would like to address regarding this specific Mercury retrograde, observe it as an opportunity to remember the power of your mind during the mercury retrograde we embrace all the re words like remembering this is an opportunity to go within and remember the power of your mind and how we are very instrumental in creating all that we encounter in our lives when we fully understand how we do that through the dynamic of thought, word, and deed. Thoughts and words, they are mercury elements. So when we allow ourselves to just kind of step back during this time and allow ourselves to be acutely mindful of the thoughts that we are generating, I believe it's in chapter three of my book, I suggest that if we allowed ourselves to be aware as well as acknowledge all the thoughts that we have generated in every moment of every day, we would allow ourselves to recognize how we have created the experiences in our lives. You know, and that's not to diminish when there are challenges there because sometimes when we miscreate 
and we're not fully aware of the power of the mind, the dynamic of our thoughts as well as our words, and we miscreate and misuse those words through the power of spelling, that's when we have inadvertently created a less than favorable uh, experience. So during this Mercury retrograde, offer yourself the time to just step back and go within and remember the power of the mind. Perhaps uh, read any inspirational material which may assist you in remembering and recognizing that ability within yourselves. You see, when we allow ourselves to fully comprehend and understand the many facets of our creative being in the creative process, we become the master of our destiny. And for many years, we have been offered the opportunity to remember our power, specifically since 2013, uh, and more directly in the United States. And that uh, significantly has to do with uh, certain planetary alignments, specifically from Pluto in the United States astrological chart, that have been offering everyone everyone the opportunity to recognize and remember your power and it doesn't suggest that by being so that we uh, misuse that power and try to control or suppress another this is the opportunity to really become very instrumental in recognizing that we are the master of our destiny we are creating the the um, all the opportunities, excuse me, all the experiences that we encounter in our lives. And this Mercury retrograde is that opportunity to employ and remember the many tools that are available for us to harness that power, especially meditation. Meditation, I cannot emphasize enough how meditation is such a powerful tool which assists us in harnessing the power and the dynamic of the mind and it offers us the ability to really anchor and ground ourselves with the earth energies virgo is an earth sign and when that virgo element is anchored and grounded to that earth element we then can harness the energy and the power of the mind and then our thoughts don't seem to become so erratic. You see, when that Virgo element isn't grounded, that's when it becomes OCD, when it becomes over-analytical, when the mind just seems to run amok, when it's not grounded. Remember, whenever we have the ability to recognize how to work with the energy, we counteract and offset any negative results from the experience. It's all about empowering ourselves. Now, I also want to address the Venus retrograde. Venus moves retrograde about uh, every 18 months or so. Now, this Venus retrograde is in the sign of Leo. If you have read my forecast in these last, last few months, as well as observed these videos, I have been addressing how many of these planetary alignments are offering us the opportunity to remember the power of love. Now Leo is the sign which most represents love. Certainly Venus is that love experience that many of us desire to enjoy while we are in this human form. And this Venus in Leo retrograde is an opportunity, is yet another opportunity to remember, remember the power of love. Also, remember how that love element is already present within you, that self love experience. You know, quite often during private consultations, I am asked, if I foresee a love experience coming to an individual, and whenever that, whenever uh, that element is addressed, first and foremost, I always psychically assess the condition and the dynamic of the heart chakra. If the heart chakra isn't fully opened, if there's any discord energetically with the heart chakra, it doesn't allow ourselves to receive that love experience and first and foremost we need to fortify that dynamic of love within ourselves that self love experience you know the venus in leo is also an opportunity to remember 
self-love and allow yourselves to return to a place of self-love within yourself. You know, when we arrive at that experience within ourselves, we observe love in all experiences in our lives. We see all things, everything, from a place of love, even those experiences which may seem less than loving because we allow ourselves to understand the dynamic of the experience and why it's occurring. And when we are being in that place of love, then those love experiences find us, whether it be a personal one-on-one -on -one love experience or that love dynamic with everyone that we encounter. And again, when we return to that place of love and fully understand the power of love, the changes which take place within ourselves and our lives and our outer world will be extraordinary. So I certainly suggest, especially right now, allow yourself to work with this, these opportunities to remember that blessing within yourself. Clear away any discord which may interfere with your ability to tap into that power of love within yourself. The Venus retrograde is an auspicious, a most powerful opportunity to clear away the discord of the heart chakra. If there are any past, you know, love experiences or less than love encounters which may still be present or we're still connected with, it's such a wonderful opportunity to clear away all of that discord and really, really, truly fortify and strengthen the power of love within yourself and arrive at that place of knowing the potential and the gravity of that love and how extraordinary it is and how it has the ability to bring forth so many blessings in our lives personally as well as throughout the entirety of humanity. You know, in April, specifically on April 8th, 2024, we have the next, what is referred to as the next great American eclipse. That's on April 8th, 2024. The last great American eclipse took place on August 21st of 2017. That's about a seven year time frame. You know, the when we follow the path of those eclipses, the, both those eclipses were visible in the United States. And the path of those eclipses mark an X on the United States. I see that as an X ma marks the spot, which is really suggesting, as I understand it, that there's something extraordinary taking place here in the United States. I've explained this for many years, especially in my forecasts. But in this instance, I suggest to recognize how every one of us, every individual who lives in the United States as well as throughout the world is being offered the opportunity to really strengthen the many blessings and the greatest potential of the United States. I observe it as the United States is really becoming the New Jerusalem and when I say that it has nothing to do with conventional religion. It's very much a spiritual transformation that is taking place in our country and every one of us, every one of us, is being offered the opportunity to recognize how we are instrumental in creating this wonderful blessing of this great land that we live in. You know, it was also in 2020 where there were some extraordinary eclipses that took place that were offering everyone the opportunity to really recognize a greater purpose and to pursue something that can also contribute to the wellness of ourselves as the wellness of all of humanity. Remember, every one of us has an extraordinary, most unique potential. There's no right or wrong, whatever that is. But it does begin with being in a place of love within yourself. And I digressed a little bit here, but I just cannot emphasize enough, during, especially during this Venus in Leo retrograde, allow yourself to return to the place of love. Um, I believe it was Marianne Williamson who has a book that is actually entitled A Return to Love. So maybe if that resonates with you during this Venus retrograde allow yourselves to embrace the inspiration in that book 
I actually believe that I first encountered that book in the late 80s. And as I'm saying this, I'm reminded that perhaps I need to reread that material that I read so many, many years ago. You know, a retrograde phase, it's also a time to reread and reconnect with some inspirational material that we may have enjoyed many, many years ago. Now, our next new moon will take place on September 14th. And the exact time of the new moon is 9.39 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Now, as I, as I am always um, highlighting that the few days leading up to the new moon, which is the balsamic moon phase of the lunar cycle, it's the last stage of the lunar cycle, it's the dark moon, that phase of the lunar cycle begins on September 10th at 6 34 p.m eastern daylight time that is the auspicious opportunity to prepare and to energetically prepare for the coming lunar cycle to just reflect on what it is that we would like to cast in motion at the new moon and energetically clear ourselves for any debris and discord as i said the new moon is on september 14th at 9.39 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, and it is in the sign of Virgo. Once again, yet another opportunity to remember the power of the mind, understanding the dynamic of our thoughts and how they create our realities. So perhaps on this new moon, which actually, as I'm looking at this chart, the chart cast for the new moon in the United States is actually located in the fifth house sector of the chart which the fifth house represents leo and the creative process so certainly this new moon is the auspicious opportunity to plant the seeds in motion of real of truly reinforcing that creative process within you through the dynamic and the power of the mind virgo also represents health and well-being so this new moon is also an opportunity to perhaps begin a new wellness regimen in whatever manner resonates with you also remember that the dynamic and the condition of the mind truly creates the wellness or the lack thereof of the physical form uh, it was uh, Louise Hay who created her book, You Can Heal Your Life, which she actually published herself because no one else would publish it for her. And she, through the, um, through, through, the, through the process of publishing that book, she created her own publishing company of Hay House because no one else would publish her material. Her story is actually quite extraordinary, how I believe it was in her late 60s or I'm not, it may not be the late 60s, but somewhere in her 60s, she created Hay House. So that right there just goes to show how, it, if regardless of what age we are at, we have the opportunity to begin many extraordinary journeys. And yet again, I digress. But what I'm emphasizing is that this new moon, perhaps begin a new healthcare wellness regimen that is very much in alignment with who it is that you are as well as in alignment with how the body actually functions and has the ability and the dynamic to truly heal itself when it is supported properly you know in order for the physical form to operate at its optimum performance we need to fortify that process so perhaps uh, this is another opportunity to explore that if it resonates with you now on September 23rd, the sun moves into the sign of Libra. We have the autumn equinox, and that will be on September 23rd, and it is exact. It begins at 2.50 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. The sun has moved into the sign of Libra, and wherever the sun transits throughout the year, we observe those opportunities to recognize some of the greatest dynamics of that sign. Now, Libra is the sign which most represents nature and the natural world. You know, many have, uh, heard, have uh, heard me highlight 
over the years how being in nature is such a powerful and profound experience. Much healing occurs when we allow ourselves to really be in nature and connect with nature. Spirit is also very present in nature and the natural world. Being in nature assists us in keeping a balance. Libra is very much about balance. When, as we observe nature, nature innately will create a balance whenever there is imbalance, disharmony, or discord. It's, it has that condition innately within itself. And I suggest, as I say that, I suggest to recognize that our humanness, our being, also possesses that great blessing of creating balance within itself when it's allowed to continue to its own devices, as well as being properly supported and fortified so that it can be so. It's when we interfere with the process that the physical form isn't permitted to create that balance within yourselves. As we move through the autumn time frame here in the northern hemisphere, we have the autumn time frame in the southern hemisphere, it's the spring time frame, but here in the northern hemisphere, especially here in the United States, in the northern states, we observe how the seasons are changing. There is such a dramatic burst of color that takes place personally. The autumn fall time frame has always been um, the, the time of year where I feel the greatest connections. We observe such beauty in the outside world. And it is a time to prepare to go within as we go through uh, the next season, which is the winter time frame. But I emphasize with this with the sun transiting into the sign of Libra, allow yourself once more to really recognize your connection with nature and the natural world and how there's such a presence of spirit in nature. Nature also brings to us and offers the opportunities of the healing elements. For example, essential oils, herbs, teas have such powerful healing modalities and qualities to them. Perhaps if it resonates with you, uh, explore those options to include in your health and wellness regimen, again, if it resonates with you. Now we have our next full moon on September 29th, and the exact time of the full moon is 5.57 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And once more, the full moon culminates, it brings to the surface, it, it, it shines the light on to where it is the darkness. The full moon, it's in the early stages of Aries. It's at exactly six degrees of Aries. You know, Aries is the sign of the entrepreneur, uh, the philanthropist. Aries is the first sign of the zodiac. It begins the evolutionary experience that we encounter as the sun transits through all the signs. You know, one of the challenges with Aries is that it doesn't always follow through with whatever it casts in motion. So perhaps at this full moon, allow yourself, one, to recognize what it is that you need to follow through with in your life. What is lingering? What has just been kind of in limbo in your life? And allow yourself to recognize that and become very dedicated to following through with whatever that might be. You know, Aries, which is ruled by Mars, when in our charts personally, when there's not too many... Uh, alignments that are directed to the Mars element in our charts. Sometimes, you know, we there, there's a lack of a dynamic, and that doesn't mean I, I don't say that as a judgment. However, if you find that perhaps you are lacking energetically in some sort of way, the moon in the full moon, excuse me, in the sign of Aries, is very much an opportunity because it's a fire sign to really fortify that fire element within yourself. If you are lacking eye dynamic or if you felt um, lethargic or uninspired, summon the energy of the full moon to recharge and refuel that fire within yourself and observe what takes place once it is that you do that. 
it could also be an opportunity to really begin and fully pursue whatever it is that you may have been wanting to follow through with in your lives. You know, again, these alignments, they're all opportunities to really recognize what it is that perhaps we may not be addressing in our lives, what we may be missing, if there's a lack or anything thereof, and to redirect and harness the energy in ways that are constructed for us to use it properly. It's about using, properly using the dynamic of all this energy, which goes back to what I was saying earlier, brings us to the opportunity of recognizing that we are the master of our destiny. So, that being said, once again, I thank you for this opportunity uh, for sharing with you some of the many astrological and spiritual possibilities and opportunity for September. Remember, we are approach approaching our next eclipse season in October. In November, I return for my second sojourn at the mystical moon uh, the schedule is actually already filling up the dates have been secured so if you would like personal private time with me please reach out to the centers the schedule does fill up very quickly many times during the last few days I can't always accommodate everyone who would like to have the time with me so please we do suggest to secure your time with me as soon as possible Again, I'm spiritualist psychic astrologer Raymond Setti. Thank you so much. Many blessings to everyone. Remain in the light and always in a place of perfect love and perfect trust. Many blessings, everyone. Namaste.